a terrifying day in Austin, but officials are not labeling the plane crash as an act of terrorism. You'll find things like upholstery cleaner, random shoes, and empty boxes that people just toss out here. Guests can come in and actually play the instrument of their choice. The post office has seen a decline in the amount of mail they handle. However, not everyone feels this Saturday cut is the best route to take. Well, it's an uneasy feeling that students in the band and string programs are feeling. Have you ever wondered what it would be like if you had to dance but couldn't hear the music? Well, I'm going to show you some kids who can. You see about 60 sun catchers. Now, they may not seem like a large amount, but they're hoping to be a leader in solar power. Now, this whole process could take up to six to nine months. Live in Phoenix, Christy Rochelle, Cronkite News. Dear viewer, it's a normal routine with stops along the way on this bright and sunny day. But this normal routine may soon go away for the mail carriers on Saturday. Sincerely, the post office. The earliest the, the Postal Service could move to a five-day delivery if Congress approves by next year, 2011. Over a 10-year period, the post office would lose $238 billion. And that's if the Postal Service did absolutely nothing. So it's obvious that changes are needed. If the plan is approved, one out of six mail carriers will lose their job, which equals about 35,000 employees. Oh, I just don't see it as being a big problem uh, to get what I need in five days. I'll, I'll pay bills online, and so I don't even need my bill sent to me. The post office has seen a decline in the amount of mail they handle. However, not everyone feels this Saturday cut is the best route to take. It's not going to save a lot of money. Michael Valdivia from the National Association of Letter Carriers doesn't believe Congress will approve this change. There's too many businesses that depend on Saturday delivery. It'll be counterproductive long term. There's no doubt. Those in elderly communities depend on this service. We are not computer literate, and therefore we don't pay bills online. We're going to be pushing up our unemployment, our welfare systems, and that sort of thing. So while we wait to hear from Congress, mail carriers keep doing what they do in their best walking shoes. They're your typical sixth grade students, goofing around and laughing with one another, except when we hear this, hear this. But that's not stopping the students at the Phoenix Day School for the Deaf from learning a hip-hop routine for their talent show performance. I was here last year and I decided to come out this year again. Herschel Jackson is with the dance studio Movement Source, which is teaching the routine to the children over 10 days. The fact that they go home and practice and then they come back the next day better than they did before, that's what makes me excited and that's what keeps me coming back. Even though these students have a hearing impairment, leaders from the dance squad say it doesn't affect their abilities on the floor. It's about moving in their body and it's not about the voice or about words or bridging those cultures of deaf and hearing. I think through dance it's a kind of a universal human art form. Janet Rosales is one of the dancers and is excited to work with her peers during the performance. I like being proud of myself and the group performing in front of everybody. Individually, I'm too shy to do that. Teachers at the school feel that this opportunity is an important experience for the students. Maybe not harder, but maybe a better word instead of hard would be challenging. There's a lot of different um, challenges that these guys experience and dancing would be one of them. An experience that they'll remember long after the music ends. In Phoenix, Christy Rochelle, Cronkite News.